tell me a story. What if I were to ask you to tell me a really great story? What one would you tell? When you were a little child, what was the story you wanted to hear again and again and again? Why do you think it might be that humans tell and retell tales? My name is Susie Andrews, and I'm an Associate Professor of East Asian Religions at Mount Allison University in Canada. And today, I want to think with you a little bit about the question, what does telling and retelling stories achieve for religious practitioners? There are lots of things stories do to and for us, right? We all know they're amusing, they uh, tell us or transmit great lessons, but today I'm really only going to make one point about what stories do, and that's that stories place us. They tell us where we are and when we are uh, in relation to a larger uh, geographic context, but also in time. And the story I want to tell you to make my point is one from Mount Wutai, now, I've been learning about Mount Wutai for a long time, but it might be new to you. So what do you need to know about Wutai Shan? Well, the name Wutai Shan refers to the mountain of five plateaus, one, two, three, four, five. And there's some fantastic scholarship on this site. You would want to know Raoul Birnbaum and Tenzin Sen, but today you have Susie Andrews telling you one story about this place. Since we're all new learners, you'd want to know that this site has been important regionally for more than 1,500 years. Mount Wutai is located today in what we might think of as the center uh, and even a little bit north of China. But I want you to know that in a critical period for Mount Wutai's history, the 600s, this site was really much nearer to the edge of what we might have thought of as Tang, China then. And for much of its, its history, uh, Robert Jamella has shown us, Wutai was inside and outside and inside and outside of the space we think of as China. So remember that we have Buddhists imagining important Mount Wutai at the edge of what we think of as China and the second thing you need to know, the mountain of five plateaus is also on the edge of what we think of as the Buddhist world. It's really Tenzin Sen who does the great job of teaching us about the way that as Mount Wutai became important 15, 1400 years ago, it allowed Buddhists to rethink their relationship in China to that larger Buddhist world centered in a territory today we might call India and Nepal. You need to know one other thing before I can tell you my story. And that's about the Buddhist deity Wenshu Pusa or Manju Shri. Manju Shri is pictured here in a document stored in the famous Dunhuang Caves. But for our story, really the part that matters is that Manju Shri is imagined as the powerful deity, a perfected being of wisdom. And for mm, 1,400 years, Buddhists have been working to assert and maintain the Bodhisattva's relationship to Mount Wutai. Dr. Andrews, you might be asking, what did you mean by that? All I'm trying to say is this. In our story, we've got a mountain, Mount Wutai, and we've got a deity, Manju Shri. And 1,500 years ago, it would have been shocking to think a deity lived on a particular site. And our story is doing some really hard work to place Manjushri on the top of the mountain and China at the center of the Buddhist world. So let's go to Mount Wutai. And this is a picture today of the site we think comes at the middle of my story. And our story is called The Story of the Temple of the Prince Who Torched His Body. And it's set in the Northern Qi period in the version I'm going to tell you. According to our story, there was a prince, the third prince in a family. And he wanted to go to the top of Mount Wutai to have a vision, a vision of Manjushri. And he climbed and he climbed and he climbed. And when he reached the peak, he practiced and he failed. Now, the next moment would be dramatic if you didn't know the name of our story. At that point, the prince sets himself on fire and uh, a site is built, right? A site is built named at that time, the text tells us, the temple of the prince who torched his body and the story, or at least part one, ends there. The part I find most interesting, though, happens next. There's a eunuch, a castrated male at the court of the northern Qi, and he hears what happened. 
He hears that a prince has set himself on fire, uh, perhaps as an offering to Manju Shri. And so he requests permission, and he too climbs, and he climbs, and he climbs. And you might be asking, Dr. Andrews, is this a big ordeal? Well, it's 10,000 feet, so he must have meant business. And when he gets to the top of the mountain, he too practices and practices. So in thinking through the story, it's pretty exciting that this eunuch has been moved by the affairs of the prince and somehow regrets his own form or situation, and so he climbs to the top of the mountain, and there he practices. Some versions of the text tells us for 21 days. Some versions say that he was reciting an important Buddhist scripture. Unlike the person who came before him, he succeeds. And what happens then? His body is restored, right? His body is restored. He returns to court. And we know from this time on, according to our miracle tale, uh, both the scripture he purportedly recited, the Hua Yan Jing, the Flower Garland Sutra, and the place uh, become important. Now, Dr. Andrews, you might be asking, what are we to make of all of this? Didn't you tell us we had an important question today? And that question might be, what does storytelling do, right, for individuals and communities? And first of all, that's an engaging story. We know that stories are about community and telling and retelling and coming together and being filled with amazement and delight. But another thing that stories do is they place us. Notice how in this story, one that circulated around the year 690 and probably somewhat before that, in this story, Mount Wutai is asserted to be the home of a bodhisattva a home of a deity important to a tradition that's beginning to say Mount Utai isn't just important locally, it's a Buddhist place. So in this way we can see stories placing people, here a deity and the proponents of that deity and a cult devoted to it at a specific place in the Buddhist world. Moreover, and Tansen Sen is really the authority here, not me, right, uh, we see that the story is saying the territory in which Mount Wutai stands, right? China, we think of it today, but the Tang is also a significant place. If I told you Manchu Sri Bodhisattva was in my backyard, you would think Susie Andrews' backyard is a pretty awesome site to be. Well, with this story, a similar thing is happening. In this story, we're not only filled with delight and amazement, but we also start to think about the territory in which uh, Manchu Sri comes to be, right? Comes to dwell as a very special place. The story then is re placing China vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the homeland of Buddhism, as we might imagine it, uh, India and Nepal. Of course, there's some interesting uh, significance here in terms of what uh, the mountain cult is saying about its relationship to a court. Now, elsewhere I've argued that this story might not have happened the way that I just told it. There's really no reason to, to um, believe that stories give us an accurate and neutral account of the past. Quite the opposite. There's a lot of flexibility in the way we tell and retell stories, right? This isn't a story that describes the historical relationship between Mount Wutai and the court necessarily. But it's a story that says what happens at this mountain has a special relationship to the court and places of power, right? It, it asserts a relationship between this Buddhist place and centers of rule, whether that's the northern Qi court, something that's doubtful. But perhaps it says to say Tang audiences, Mount Wutai is a place of importance in the court and uh, two patrons, right, with, with enormous resources and clout. You know as well as I do that telling stories is a source of delight and something that's really uh, human, right? Uh, humans tell stories, they retell them and tell them again. Uh, we do it over the phone, we do it when we go for jogs, uh, we do it uh, when we see an old friend after a long time. Our story about Mount Wutai in uh, what we think of today as Central North China shows us how stories can be very um, fruitful to the religious communities that tell them because they allow them to make big claims about why a place is important, what their place might be in a larger uh, religious community, how the place with which they're associated matters in a larger, uh, in a larger uh, religious or political context.